You know what? I'm going to stand. But I'm going to leave this here. Perfect. Welcome back to another SR4U Q&A video. Your boot-related questions and my answers to them all pulled from my Instagram, SR4U underscore Josh. You see the name on screen right now. It will be linked down below in the description. Make sure you go and follow me on Instagram if you want to ask a question for the next Q&A video. Which, by the way, if you guys do enjoy the Q&A series on the channel and want to see it continue, don't forget to support this one with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time and don't want to miss out on future content from me, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with a little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. Jimmy, do you think Adidas will start making more beautiful messy boots? The question of why messy signature boots always seem to be ugly is something that has baffled me as well as a lot of people for a number of years now and they haven't all been ugly back in the f50 days i feel like messi had some really great looking colorways but ever since they killed off all four lines and introduced the messy line and then it transitioned into nemesis i really feel like messi's boots from a design and colorway standpoint have not been the greatest that's not to say that they've all been ugly but i think the general reception across the board especially given the fact that his last generation nemesis line was doing so bad that adidas had to kill it off at the last little stint there um it just isn't something that adidas has done a very good job with and just to be clear this is totally on adidas not on messi himself a lot of people think that these signature boots are being designed by the man himself messi to me doesn't strike me as someone that one likes to change his boots very much and two really is interested in football boots at all he kind of just wears what he's paid to wear and he has a lifetime contract with the adidas brand which is why he wears adidas boots by the way that's the case for pretty much any big name pro cristiano ronaldo also has a lifetime contract with nike if you didn't know so unless messi is somehow secretly behind the scenes kind of designing these boots himself and picking out all the colors which i highly doubt this is the fault of several design departments departments at adidas which I don't know that you can fault them for that because I think it's very difficult to create a design and colorway combinations that everyone is going to like. They're kind of just making their best guess. But some of the efforts that they've put forth really do make you question what they're doing. I mean, the Messi 15.1 might be one of the ugliest football boots of all time. Hi, John Wick. I just wondered what your favorite player of all time is. Growing up, I feel like I changed my mind a lot. At one point, it was Zidane. For a long time, it was Ronaldinho. I really liked Thierry Henry. As I got older, Van Persie is a player that I really liked watching. I've always been a big fan of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Obviously, Ronaldo and Messi uh, have been favorites of mine as well. And I'm just looking around the room to see if there's anybody else that I'm missing. And I don't think so, but... I guess if I had to pick an all-time favorite, it's probably Ibra. Hi, Joma. Why do you think we haven't seen Cristiano Ronaldo testing the new Mercurials yet in training? So if you didn't know, there is a next generation of Mercurial coming. I know, shocking. There's a Vapor and a Superfly by the looks of it, and we've seen several pros already training in blacked-out variations, Hazard probably being the most notable of the bunch, and I've made videos on both the upcoming Vapor 13 and the Superfly 7 on the channel if you're looking for a little bit more info. But... Why hasn't Cristiano Ronaldo been testing the next generation Mercurial, probably the Superfly, because that's what he's been wearing? And the answer to that question is because Nike's probably not that interested in what he has to say. Think about it for a second. Cristiano Ronaldo has had his own custom variation of the Mercurial Vapor or Superfly for basically as long as we can remember. Going back to the Superfly 4, which was a huge revolutionary product for the Nike brand, he was the only guy that had this heavily customized variation that was its own shape and had its own collar. It was just nothing like the retail model and it seems like Cristiano Ronaldo likes something very specific about the football boots that he tends to wear so when it comes to testing out the next generation product I don't think Nike's really looking for feedback from a guy that's going to have a custom variation anyways I'm sure at some point in time he'll test what is likely the next generation Superfly in training but for the most part they don't necessarily need Cristiano Ronaldo to develop the next generation of Mercurial a lot of people think that the development of these products is heavily influenced by professional feedback but I don't think that's quite the case. At least that's not, it's not to the same extreme that the companies would like you to believe that it is. I think what these brands do, Nike, Adidas, Puma, whoever it may be, they come up with a product, they give it to pros to try out, and they basically say, hey, is there anything that's horribly wrong with this? If the pro says no, then that's what they release to the public. You gotta remember that pro footballers are pro footballers, not boot designers. So I'm sure that they go to the guys that they know wear something closer to the retail variation. And I'm sure certain guys give better feedback than others, just because they're a little bit more interested in the boots, period. So uh, it's not to say that Nike doesn't value the opinion of Cristiano Ronaldo, 
but I don't think he's as influential in the development of the Mercurial series as a lot of people believe he is. How to solve soul separation in your football boots if you do not have the money to get new ones. I'd love to say that there was a solution to your problem, but unfortunately that's not really the case. You can try some kind of super glue to maybe temporarily hold the sole plate and the upper together, but that's just it. It's only going to be a temporary fix. Tape usually works pretty good, but again, these are all temporary fixes. Unfortunately, if your football boots break, because the materials are so thin and there's really no glue that you can buy that's gonna hold everything together, you pretty much just have to replace them with a new pair. Hey Jacrispy, out of any Nike Mercurial colorway, what would you most want to see retroed? I have three ideas that come to mind. The Mercurial Vapor 3 in the launch colorway, where it was a white upper with the gold heel and the black swoosh. Absolutely love the way that those look. My second idea is the CR7 Galaxy Vapor 9, which is not that old, but I think everyone would love a Galaxy themed Mercurial again. And then my third idea is maybe a little bit out there, but I'd actually like to see a remake of some Mercurial Vapor 4 colorways where they add on a lace cover just for the sake of making it look a little bit more like a Vapor 4. Totally useless, totally unnecessary, but I think that would be really cool. Hey Jimmy Fallon, what is the most underrated cleat at the moment? The couple that come to mind are the New Balance Tequila 1.0 Pro, that's technically now the V1 Pro because they just felt the need to change the name. Uh, also, I think the Nike Premier 2 is kind of underrated. A lot of people overlook that particular boot. And while it's technically an older model now, I think the Puma 119.1 Low is also really solid. I guess pretty much anything Mizuno counts as well. Also the Lotto Maestro 200. Do you think Nike will stop branding ACC on everything as there is no proof of it being there other than the branding? If they haven't felt the need to truly prove it at this point, I don't see them trying to change that in the near future. It is an invisible feature that everybody thinks is very, very important. And as long as they just print ACC on the upper, people are gonna buy the boots. They'll even spend more money just to have ACC on their boots. What color do you like to choose for personal cleats to wear? If we're talking any boot in any color, I would probably go for white boots. I just think that white boots always look the best. If they're super clean, that's ideal, but even dirty white boots, I'm kind of a fan of. Hey, Jack O'Lantern, how much pressure is there on players from boot sponsors to perform well? Obviously, I can't speak for every professional player with a boot deal, but in general, I would say almost none. Obviously, the really big names who are getting signature colorways, maybe there's a little bit more pressure on them because there's just more eyes on them in general. But overall, I don't think that there's really any pressure to be sponsored by Nike and wear Nike boots or be sponsored by Adidas and wear Adidas boots. I don't think that they're pressuring anybody to perform really well. Maybe within the contract that they sign, they might get some benefits or some extra money for performing well, depending on what's been negotiated. But I would say that there's probably more pressure if you are, let's say, 24, 25 years old and starting to kind of really establish yourself as a professional player and your boot deal is also coming up. So depending on your performance during that last year of the boot deal, you might get a lot less money or a lot more money depending on your performance. So from that perspective, I could see the pressure of a boot deal being a factor for a professional footballer. But in general, I don't think they ever say, here's these boots, score three goals in the next match or we're dropping you. Hey Jordan, what's the best way to get rid of my horrible smell from my cleats? I would use fire. Which boot would you recommend for a first leather boot? I really like this question and I'm not sure I've ever expressed this opinion on the channel before, but I would say as first leather boots, or even if you were a beginner to the sport in general, going for leather boots over thin synthetics, I personally feel is a little bit better. That's not to say that leather boots are going to improve your touch on the ball, but I feel like having that little bit of softness and padding just makes for a little bit more forgiveness in regards to touch, especially if your technique is not the greatest, where if you have these super thin kind of barefoot feel football boots, the ball kind of just bounces right off them. I just feel like leather boots are the best to learn on and it's not something you're gonna be thinking about at all when you're playing just because of how simple they are. As far as boots for a beginner or your first leather boots, I really think the best option out there right now based on price as well as quality, it's kind of the perfect balance, is the Nike Premier 2, $110 retail price. You can get them for under $100 if you're not too picky about the colorway. And that's one of those boots that, like I said, it's got good quality leather, it fits really nice, it's super comfortable, and it's just a good first leather boot in my opinion. Hey Josh, what is your opinion on limited edition boots? First of all, who is this Josh character? And second of all, I guess if you want my opinion on limited boots, I really have no issue with them. What a lot of people fail to realize is that limited edition releases, whether it's football boots or any type of product, exist simply for the sake of hype. It doesn't exist 
for the sake of necessarily making money. Obviously, if a product sells out, that's a best case scenario for any company, but they made a limited amount, which in turn drives up the interest in that product. If it was a regular release that would be readily available for three or four months, people wouldn't care as much. But as soon as you put a number of 2000 pairs worldwide on a pair of football boots, all of a sudden people really want them. So it's kind of trying to find that perfect balance of creating hype, but also maintaining interest in the general releases. Obviously we're seeing a lot more limited stuff uh, in 2019 because of the internet, because of social media. It's just very easy for these companies to constantly launch new products. But for me, I really like the limited thing. Uh, it's not something that bothers me at all. And I think again, people need to realize it's for hype, not necessarily for just selling as many boots as possible. Just as an example, let's say you needed new boots and Nike just dropped something limited, but they sold out too quickly and you missed out. You're probably going to be very likely to buy a Nike product because of that limited boot that you wanted, even though you couldn't get it. That limited edition boot made you interested in the brand. Jonathan, what is the worst position you have played in soccer? As I've talked about before, I've played pretty much every position, but I have to say, especially now, I do not like being the goalkeeper. If you're talking about just shooting in training, playing as a goalkeeper, perfectly fine. I'm happy to do it. I'm actually going to enjoy myself. But as soon as you put me in a match, something about playing in goal just makes me very nervous. I don't like it. And uh, it's, I don't like it. I, I don't know what else to say. Anyways, guys, that's it for this Q&A. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you'd like to ask a question that could potentially be answered in the next Q&A episode, my Instagram is sr4u underscore Josh. Go and follow me there if you don't already because I pull all of the questions for these videos from my Instagram. However, if you have any questions regarding anything that I talked about in this video, feel free to ask those down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.